Hello there everybody and welcome. In this video I'm going to feature a new build for you featuring the primal faction around the Meyer Crocodile Totem. So these are the Swamp Lovers and they are featuring poison damage and they are, well that build went places I, I didn't even know that are possible. So all in all if you like dominating the game from turn one on, this build is exactly what you'd like. I had almost no difficulties clearing anything. As soon as you have a couple of supporters going, this build goes places. And I'm going to show you how and why. So, it is a very animal-heavy build, because I felt like it's a very fitting thing. If we're going for the crocs, we might as well go full-on animal. Mind you, though, that this build is theoretically compatible to any primal totem. You, you can really use that for any primal totem you want to. It would be sufficiently uh, good there as well and would totally crunch enemies. Now, let's get started with racial and cultural traits. I went for poisonous as I found it fun to combine the disease fact of the, uh, the disease factor of the crocodiles with poison and hideous stench to lower the enemy's magic resistance to make the damage go a little bit higher and make it easier to apply poison and disease on the enemy. All in all, these traits will be used in the later game though only by your tier 3 spearmen because these are basically the only frontliners that will remain in your roster at the mid late game stage. Now, the culture itself runs around swamp terrain. Extra food production means this is by far the most expansionistic thing that you can play, as you will rack up the primal food bonus that you already have, plus the one that runs with the swamps. It's crazy. We gain the primal crocodile as a summon, which is pretty sick as it increases its damage whenever it attacks by a 25%. Since we can summon that thing wherever we want on the battlefield, we can utilize all three blows in one go, which is a little bit bonkers. I don't think it'll stay like that, but right now it is insanely powerful and this thing can be summoned in the back of units so you can have triple strike flanking attack out of nothing, which is... I think a little bit too much. But even if we weren't able to summon that stuff wherever we want to, aka after the nerf <laughs> that I see coming, it'll still be a very good summon as these guys deal out damage quite heavily when they get to use all the three attacks, which is really, really massive. Apart from that, we gain the access to deal more blight damage and disease the enemy when we hit them, which is in so far interesting as it lowers the resistance even further, enabling us to deal more damage with our magical components of our attacks, which is really good. There's nothing wrong about that. But all in all, I felt like the Meyer Crocodile's boon was the least attractive one that I did so far, but the Primal Crocodile is super strong. Now, culture traits, we went for a combination that I have to say thanks to the comment section for bringing this one up, because the combination of gifted casters and mana channelers is just beyond insane. We use mana channelers to make our summons cheaper, as this build is very summon focused, it is very good, and gifted casters does not only give us more casting points, but it also gives us the crocodile summoning spell right from the get-go which is yeah you can just go around with your starting and army and just kill stuff as your crocodile summoning spell will also be down to nine mana per usage which is insanely cheap so that alone is a frame that carries you through the early game on itself so let's move over to the tomes and let some magic happen there we are running to begin with at the uh, with the Tome of Beasts, which is in itself a very, very powerful fit to the primals. Call of the Wild will upgrade all of our units with strengthening and defenses. We got animal kinship as a racial transformation, which makes animals and our units just stronger. The wild speakers are excellent bo uh, boosters for our own animal units because unleashed beast is just very, very powerful. They can also summon even more units and they gain access to all the extra enchantments that supporters can get. They make a very, very nice complement to our animists and should make like 20 to 25 percent of your supporters in my humble opinion 
Summon Wild Animal is something you will use to fill up your rosters as it is really powerful to just crank out units for 30 mana each. It's very, very good. Wildlife Sanctuary allows you to chain recruit units in the towns, which is really good. And don't sleep on Pack Leader as this makes animal units even stronger, especially the flanking uh, at bonus is really, really good. The second one we go for is Tome of Evolution, as this makes ore units even nastier. Many animals have a evolution form, so Rapid Evolution Enchantment goes really nice into that. We also gain access to insanely survivable skirmishes in form of slithers, and wyverns are just really nice survivalist fighters they are they also come with different uh, add-ons of mana or, or elemental color damage as you see there they come in different uh, flavors which plays really nicely in or resistance lowering game because that amplifies magical damage really nice combo draconic vitality makes or low tier units even more strong and shepherd is a real nice thing to foster up evolving units and youthful rejuvenation well the resurgence on it is really nice as you can really make risky plays with your evolving units henceforth really good stuff tier two we go into famists and that is where we gain a upgrade for our supporters they gain a touch heal oh no it's not a touch heal a ranged heal with buff skill which is amazing it's a free one too so we can use our usual primal shenanigans on the side we gain fey touched which makes the mist from the staves of mist even buff our units and the mistling is another nice skirmisher unit that you might want to toss on in if you want to again here lots of mixed elemental damage plays in nice into our resistance lowering scheme the fey water pond brings us much needed mana strongly recommend to use this and don't forget to use fey blessing for your heroes as well goes darn well the second tier 2 tome i chose for this one was tome of revelry as we are spamming out units like crazy and we have already a heightened chance of critical hits this complements this part of the build excellent Blood Fury Weapons is just a nice flat-out bonus to everything we field in the melee sector. We got, with Revels of Carnage, another steroid for our units to evolve even faster. So we really can evolve units darn fast with the combination of Evolution and Revelry. Don't underestimate the power of these two things together. The Skulls are here again another crazy good supporter dealing substantial damage with tier 3. Seriously, this can't hit quite hard if it uh, crits and it also inflicts insanity. We also gain access to buffing spells for our summons and a regeneration and moral boost for our frontliners. All in all, we also can add in Revelous Triumph to make our crits hit even harder and I really want to uh, recommend Revelous Heart here only partially. It's one spell that you can stall out a little bit as it will mostly benefit the damage profile of your supporters because the racial transformation won't apply to your animals, your troops. It's very important to note that. Okay, we head on over to the tier 3 area. The first tier 3, if we're running an animal build, should be always bigger, as I think there is no more powerful synergy out there. Finally, have we access to high tier animal summons? Fairly cheap as well, 75 mana ain't too much. We gain a fat unit enchantment for all of our animals, making them hit so much harder. Applies to your cultural summon to crocodile as well. We gain super growth, which makes our baseline troops much more resilient. This, on the other hand, is one that I strongly recommend, as it makes your supporters die slower. And Totem of the Wild is a really, really nice battlefield summon that summons more summons, and that is quite nuts, considering how cheap it is. Unleash Beast is then here our Super Saiyan cheat card, although I gotta say it is very, very costy, so use it wisely. It is a powerful move, but it eats up a lot of your resources that you could use elsewhere. Animal Handler is in so far a really 
really powerful thing as it makes our animal troops immune to mind control which is always a nice card because i hate having my units uh, taken over and it adds in some magical resistance so really powerful trait for your uh, heroes there as well the other tier three tome well you have a lot of flexibility on this build you could easily go into cycles for more sustain qualities amping up the power and the damage profile of your ranged attacks, giving you a resurrecting shaman druid, and like I said, more healing spells. Even Tome of the Dragon is not really uh, a wrong card, as we can upgrade these dragons scary fast into their tier 5 version. We only don't have too much benefit from Flamer Focus, as battle mages are mostly foreign to this build. And yeah, Purifying Flame and Draconian Transformation can be quite nice, but yeah, well, I don't see that uh, tome as a huge fit. I had much more fun fiddling around with Tome of Devastation at that point. This would be my, be my personal recommendation for this build as the second one, second tier 3 tome, as it is nuts. Flame Burst Weapons is applying to most of your animal units, which makes them crit more often and makes their victims go boom. Sick stuff. Really sick stuff. I really like that enchantment uh, so much that it basically makes up for this tome alone. But Unleash the Warhounds is a really strong siege uh, project for our build, as we are boosting the hell out of these Warhounds with all the things that we have going on for ourselves. Focus of Devastation is really nice as this makes our supporters all of a sudden go really nuts on defense modes and they can destroy walls of a, all of a sudden. And don't underestimate how powerful it is to have a ranged attack that switches off defense modes. This can breach entire formations and make them vulnerable as hell. Really good stuff. And yeah, the war breed. Sure, why not? A tier 4 uh, shock unit never hurts. It's basically the big brother of what you got for yourself with a primal charger. Just in really good. Worthy, uh, a, another worthy recommendation goes for the Tomb of Teleportation too, as the phasing enchantment is really good for all the supporters that we field, giving you more safety. Astro Astral Trade Relay makes your economy go nuts. And yeah, the phase beasts are really nice. They're really, really good. I love these beasties for what they provide. And I can't remember anymore, but I would assume they are animals too. But I'm not 100% sure here. Emergency teleportation gives you another really good safety trick for your armies. And Mass Recall and Chronogates are just really good teleporters. As the big benefit of this book is that you can skip entirely picking the teleporter infrastructure thing here for 200 Imperium. That is just included in the book. You don't need that anymore. Really good stuff. So choose to your own liking in the tier three segment. Like I said, lots of flexibility available there. In the tier four segment will I strongly vote for Paradise and from that point on go crazy. You can even go into Tome of the Stormborn if you wanted to, as this is a really good add-on if you happen to have a lot of um, ocean provinces as you gain really really nice increase of resource gain there and the naga form is a really really powerful racial transformation just it's it's a major one make sure that it fits into your game plan but like i said if you have a lot of uh, ocean stuff going on in your world this is almost a must-have because it's just so good at tra manipulating ocean gameplay okay we got all that down, let's move over to the strategy section. This build is a loaded gun right from the get-go, which is crazy in so far as you will ignore most of your baseline roster. Try to avoid recruiting any primal daughters or protectors along, uh, beyond what you start with, as these guys are really not needed too much. As you see here, I haven't even built my tier 3 town hall yet, as there were a lot of other things always more important or appealing. So there's really a lot of goodness in this build right from the get-go. Try to get your hands on animists and wild speakers right uh, as early as you can. The crazy thing about animists is you can easily just get your hero together with five animists on the field. If you have enough mana, this thing just claps. 
it is just yeah right now the animists are really nuts as you can summon crocodiles with that the basic strategy is you shoot once apply two stacks of rising fury with that and somebody else claps then spiritual healing on them giving you the remaining three stacks and instant crocodile as this doesn't really have any cooldown you can repeat that as often as necessary and that can just turn battles into trivialities i have conquered this uh, father oak here with just two heroes and four animists with ease no biggie just spamming out the crocodiles like crazy keeping them alive and spamming out more and more and more while utilizing the abilities of your heroes to spam out more units and keeping them alive is just really way to go so basically with this build what you want is just to get yourself the animals that you'd like to have and then back it up with supporters and ignore most of the rest of your roster entirely you can totally decide for your own liking how you want to pull it off if you want to have more wyverns or more general animals or you wait for the big animals it's all up to you the really important parts are rely on your supporters as these are just the major trick to go and like i said the wild speakers forgot their name there are really good as they can buff up animals like crazy especially killing momentum if you can foresee where one of your animals will land a killing blow this is such a powerful little trick so yeah all in all I don't know, this was the most powerful build that I tried so far with the Primals, out of the simple reason that the direct raw damage from the Crocodile is nuts. It is just so good as it buffs it damage whatever blow by 25% more. It has such a crazy thing going on for itself. Two Crocodiles were able to kill a tier 5 Horned God in one turn after a couple of buffs. Uh, buffs or three crocs can kill definitely any tier 5 unit in one go that's just pretty nutty i also recommend going for spirit uh, for for the wizard king leader so far this is i think for the primals the most powerful trick to go as we can via over channel just go crazy and summon two of these creatures in one turn and the rest is focus the support skills get yourself spiritual healing and fate blessing for your heroes don't sleep on all the other good support skills on your hero for your armies and after these are down feel free to go for something for your heroes to deal more damage but i'd strongly recommend to put even all of these support skills again on your heroes as the fun part here is if your heroes can apply spiritual healing the go the, the gameplay goes like animist goes up to shoot next turn hero packs spiritual healing on the, the on the animists and i was able to whip out two to three crocs in just one turn with that little trick and this goes places really try it out it's nuts it's fun it's crocodiles so not much more to say this build, like I said, is applicable to pretty much all of the other primal builds as well, as none of these is exclusively interacting with the crocodile itself. So you can slap that on basically every one of the primal frames and uh, totems and have your fun with it. I just felt like it was a very fitting thing for the nature theme of the Maya crocodile. So, yeah. Drop me your comments down below, leave me your thumbs up, consider subscribing, and as usual, a big thanks to the almighty and wise comment section for sharing these wonderful little tricks and ideas with me so I can share them again with you. So yeah, down there in the description box, by the way, you'll find a lot of links. There's Discord, where you can find it like-minded gamers and have a chat with me if you'd like there is also twitch where i do stream regularly and last but not least check out patreon paypal or buy me a coffee these are the best ways it means to support the channel directly or if you'd like you can also check out my youtube channel membership thingy which allows you to just preview all the things that i have already scheduled for release either way thanks a lot for everybody supporting the channel directly and thanks a lot to you especially watching this video up until the very end i deeply deeply appreciate that you're still hanging around god knows how often you watch these ad rolls and you're still here 
Thanks for that. <laughs> Have a good one and see you soon. Bye-bye.